Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome to another one of our fly tying tutorials. Today I'm going to walk you through a carp fly that has kind of become famous around here, uh, the mulberry. Now, certainly, you've probably heard about this, um, about carp feeding on mulberries. If you haven't, certainly do a search around YouTube. Um, you can find, uh, back in, uh, I don't know, about 15, 16 years ago, uh, we did a DVD here called Carpet. And it was with our good friend Dave Whitlock. And Dave had done some mulberry fishing in the past. Um, and we had kind of talked about it a little bit, but there's a lot of footage of, of the mulberry fishing on that DVD. Um, and then also you can look back on our YouTube channel. I was lucky enough to introduce Flip Pallet uh, to catching carp on a mulberry, and we filmed a Walker's K Chronicles all about catching carp on mulberry flies. So uh, those are a couple of references you can look back. But around here in about May, late May, early June, the mulberries on the trees start to ripen, and the carp will lay under these trees and wait for the mulberries to fall. Um, so I'm going to show you how to tie this mulberry fly today, and it's super simple. I apologize, you probably already know how to tie it, um, but it's basically a sucker spawn. For those of you that know steelhead um, tying, uh, you're just going to take some chenille and loop it up a hook, but uh, I'll show you how to do it. And this fly was shown to me many years ago, uh, a gentleman by the name of Jim Davidson and also Jim Andrix that worked here uh, at the shop force for many years. Uh, they showed me this fly and I just tweaked it a little bit with some Zapagap. I'll talk about that here. Um, but it's really super simple. So I'm going to be using a Daiichi 1530, which is one of my favorite hooks. And of course, my first step actually should be to put my click glasses on and there we go i can see it so the daiichi 1530 i use this hook for tons of stuff all of my steelhead eggs a lot of steelhead nymphs uh, and for a lot of my carp flies but it's just perfect for this mulberry fly and then the thread i'm using is the ultra thread uh, the utc the 140. Uh, i i want uh, quite a bit of strength so that I can crank down on the wraps of chenille as I put them in, but I don't want too much bulk. So I found that the UTC 140 works great. I'm just going to start my thread as I do with every fly, I'm basically covering the shank, and I wind up with my thread back at the bend of the hook. And then I'll trim the excess with my, my day in, day out scissors. And then I'm going to take three strands, and I would say probably about six inches long I want those strands to be. And I just switched over to my synthetic scissors. It just work a little bit better for the heavier stuff and keeps my, my day in, day out scissors a little more intact and sharp. I'm going to take all three of these strands of black chenille. This is medium black sh standard rayon chenille and one trick i'm going to do i'm going to tie in all three of these pieces of chenille right there at the bend of the hook and before i do that if if i just tie them in right there i'm going to get a big lump where i tied them in okay so what i'm going to do is take my thumb and my index finger and i'm going to strip off all the fuzzy stuff and get down to the cotton core of the chenille and I give myself about a quarter of an inch or so, and that allows me to tie it in right there at the bend, and I'm just tying it in by the cotton core. I wrap over it, and then wrap back to the bend of the hook. Stripping off that fuzzy core allows you to tie it in securely, and you don't have that little hump that you have to deal with as you're tying the fly. And now, here we go again, I apologize, this is so easy. But I'm going to take all three pieces of the chenille and I'm going to form a loop. And I'm going to go one wrap, I'm going to go two wrap to secure it. I'm going to reach and grab all three strands of chenille and then put a couple of security wraps right in front of the chenille, usually about two or three. And now I'm going to repeat this process all the way up the hook. 
Um, I, I believe I get one, two, three, four loops of chenille. Now I'll make this next loop, I'll make my second loop and my third loop a little bit bigger than the first and the fourth, just to give it kind of a, a little bit of shape. Now I'm going to pull the strands out of the way, give myself a couple security wraps there. Here's my third loop. One, two, all the while you're working to keep all of this on top of the hook shank. Make sure it doesn't rotate around like mine kind of did right there. And then I tighten down, lift the strands of chenille, two or three security wraps. And now my last loop, I'm right behind the eye. Maybe give it an extra wrap or two right there. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap. There's just a couple of tricks here that I can show you. I'm going to go ahead and basically wrap my thread right to behind the eye, making sure that I secure this in really well. And then I'm going to wrap the thread backwards a little bit. Okay, you're going to get some semblance of a head on this fly. And I want to be at the rear part of the head with my thread. And I'll show you why here in just one second. Okay, so my thread is hanging at the rear part of the head. And now when I come in, I'm going to use my Dr. Slick synthetic scissors. I use these things a ton. You've seen me use them before. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to come in. I'm going to lift those three strands of chenille. I'm going to put the blades of the scissors right along the eye of the hook. And I'm going to just give it a nice little one, two, three. You can kind of feel all three of those strands of chenille being cut. I use the synthetic scissors because they do a good job, a better job of cutting the heavy stuff like chenilles and, and wires and things than my uh, tungsten carbide, my, my standard scissors that I use for the finer work. Now the reason why I wrap that thread back to the back of the head is if I just lifted up those strands and made that cut, I'm probably going to cut my thread. And this way if you do cut a few loops of thread, the whole thing doesn't come unraveled. And now Again, making sure that I've got everything up on top of the hook shank. I'll just go ahead and kind of wrap over those, those loose ends now. And get a little bit of head. If there's some loose stuff in there, I'll just trim it up a little bit. Just to get a nice clean head on there. And then uh, I didn't bring my whip finish tools in here today. So I'll just whip finish with my hands. Throw a few half hitches. Not that big of a deal. I just need to secure the thread so it doesn't come unraveled because our friend Zappa Gap is coming up next. Just throw a couple half hitches on there, tighten it up, and trim with my scissors. So there the fly is done. But what I found over time is that when you're fishing mulberries, and this is very unique. In fact, again, go back and watch that Walker's Cake Chronicles that Flip and I did together um, where we explain it. Uh, that the, the carp need to hear this fly plop into the water. If they don't hear it plop, they don't really recognize it as a mulberry. So I found that just tying this fly and I, not doing anything further, I didn't get the right plop. It was just kind of falling and setting on the water or it wouldn't make the right sound entering the water or it would sink very slowly. So I played around with uh, putting bead heads on it. I played around with uh, putting lead wraps on the body and that wound up being too much. I was spooking carp uh, by the sound and, and it just didn't work. So oddly enough, what I found was Zapagat. And here's what I do. I just put a thin thread of Zappa Gap right along the underside of the fly. So I just take my Zappa Gap and I coat the underside of the fly. And of course this, this makes it more durable. It keeps it from uh, spinning around the hook shank. But I put a nice thread. Actually it's not all that thin. I'm, I'm being fairly liberal with it and coat that up real good set it aside to dry and believe it or not that was just the right amount of weight to get this fly to sink to plop and to sink just right um, 
another thing that you you can do I've, I've heard of people doing this and I've done it myself a time or two is um, soak these in anise or vanilla before you fish carp are very uh, scent oriented and I have seen it make a difference where soaking these in vanilla uh, will will cause the carp to come and eat where they won't eat the ones that aren't scented. Some people may not like that, but uh, I'm all about catching fish. If you, if you don't use the scent, make sure that you get this thing wet before you make your first cast. So just get, dip it in the water, get it good and saturated so that it makes the right plop and sinks just right. I tie these in black. Black's the most often uh, used color. That's the one that we sell the most. But I also do it in purple as well. You get some variations on the color of the mulberry depending on where you are in the country and how ripe they are. I've even seen some mulberries that are kind of a wine color, which you can just change the color of your chenille. So there you have it, the legendary mulberry fly. Tie some up and get out there after carp this summer. They love these things. So thanks as always for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got a lot more coming your way. Thanks for listening.